Hey, so today we are going to be talking about what is a digital twin and we're going to do it in 10 minutes or less. And I do also have a fun example in this video. So make sure you stick around till at the end. A digital twin is a very high fidelity model of a physical thing from the real world. And this could include mechanics, humans, and other architectures. So this often is associated and maybe misunderstood when people are discussing CAD drawings, which is computer aided design, IOT dashboards, or even some things that are showing up in what we might call the metaverse. The key difference between those things and what a digital twin actually is, is that bi-directional interchange of data. So what that means is the physical system or person or process is actively feeding data into the model. The model is then being able to simulate at that very high fidelity and accuracy because it goes down to the component level and then it shares that data back to the physical world. So that interchange between data is really what makes a true digital twin. So this makes it more accurate to real life scenarios because it's actually interpreting the data as things happen. This is very common with, let's say, autonomous vehicles. It also really helps with decision making on runtime or streaming data because you are seeing the benefits or risks as they develop and you can then take action on them much quicker. You get that accuracy because it's not just a general model, it goes down to that atomic level. And it's also sometimes more effective with cost and resources because you can then experiment with things on the digital twin rather than the physical twin, which is a big reason why aerospace was one of the forerunners in this space is because putting something up in the air and not being confident on what that experiment is, is probably not a surefire way to one, be true to form and what's actually going to happen because you're not going to have people and, and supplies on that aircraft. And not only that, but you don't want something falling out of the sky. So there's a safety issue there as well. So that's why aerospace was one of the first that was doing digital twins. And it has a higher probability of accuracy because it has way more data points than your average simulation, which is why it's becoming very popular in very high risk, high reward scenarios or scenarios where you have to have lots of data points for individual components that might break down or need maintenance before they actually have something go wrong with them. And you know, that's mechanical and in the physical human realm as well. So one way to think about what a digital twin is, is from the Oscar Wilde classic, A Picture of Dorian Gray. The story is there is a painting of Dorian Gray that takes on all the bad and abusive things, things that Dorian does in his real life. The painting takes on the risks while the real physical persona of Dorian is not affected. This holds an important lesson for anyone getting into digital twins. Like Dorian, if you do not pay attention to the effects of your real world actions, have on a twin, twin, you too could, could turn, turn out like Dorian. Dorian. The, the painting, painting for digital twin is only simulating what the effects are. It is ultimately the, the physical twin, twin that will pay the consequences. Be sure to have that feedback loop firmly in place. Digital twins are most often used in manufacturing, supply chain, and networking processes. But more and more, they are also being used to simulate human interactions, like the spread of the cold, or the thing that shall not be named. And human anatomy to show the effects of certain factors, like smoking on someone's specific body over time. So IBM, NVIDIA, Microsoft Azure, these are platforms that are already building out their digital twin capabilities, among other more cottage type solutions. So if you are interested in any of those, I have some links down below if you wanna go and check them out. And it's not just getting the tooling, it's also getting the IoT sensors. It is usually IoT sensors that have the capacity to take in this very minute detail of data on any given system. Plus the processing power of this data. It is constantly streaming very high amounts of data and needing to process it at a very high rate. So keep that in mind if you are trying to get into digital twins. And with all of this, you have to make sure that you are using interoperable 
frameworks because if you have different systems, they don't always use the same schema, they don't all have the same data, and they might not talk to each other. So that is certainly something that you are going to have to look into, and it is a big use case as to why Knowledge Graph has a big role to play in all of this. Not to mention cybersecurity and other factors that you have to think about when you're dealing with that high fidelity data, because if you have, let's say, a deep fake that has been created from someone's image, that is essentially a digital twin. It's their exact replica, at least at the uh, system level, meaning your body. But who made it? And what are they doing with that digital twin out in the world? These are some of the ethical considerations we will have to think about with digital twins if it gets farther into the social aspect of what you can do with them. All right, so I hope this was a fun, bite-sized way of talking about digital twins. It is certainly something that is coming along very quickly and has a lot of really fantastic use cases to help us understand things in a digital world before we push them out into the physical world. And also to make sure that we have all of those strange behaviors and uh, consequences that we see from just human behavior not being predictable, a lot of that physical data will also be able to be taken into these digital twins to help us make them a little bit more refined. So I hope that you've enjoyed this video and catch you next time.